Now turning to the latest in Ukraine, U.S. intelligence is now warning that there's tensions between Russian President Vladimir Putin and his military leaders, saying Putin may be misinformed about the poor performance of Russia's military and economy. And today, President Biden spoke with Ukraine's president for nearly an hour on the phone, where the president said he'd give the Ukraine government $500 million in additional assistance. The United Nations says 4 million people have fled Ukraine since the beginning of Russia's invasion, creating a massive refugee crisis. And as the situation continues to unfold, I asked Charles Bierbauer how journalists are able to report on the war. It's got to be difficult. Their stories are keeping everybody informed. Bierbauer is the former dean of journalism at USC and the former Moscow bureau chief for ABC News. I had an opportunity to uh, converse with uh, Isabel Koshudyan from the Washington Post this week. Isabel is a USC journalism graduate, and she happens to be right now still in Odessa, the port on the southern part of Ukraine. And that's where she she's able to uh, make judgments on how people are, are performing, how they're behaving. One of the things she said that was interesting is they're trying to have some semblance of normality. There are people in the streets, people pushing baby carriages, going to restaurants, shops are still functioning. But if you if you went from there to Mariupol, or if you went to any of the cities that are under siege, you'd have an entirely different picture. I also asked Beer Bauer about the situation with the peace talks in Ukraine. We will have that part of the conversation tonight at 11. Well, today was South Carolina military